The plan is in the middle of the Industrial Revolution when terrible monsters with an insatiable taste for human flesh appear out of a mystery virus. These creatures, called Caban, can only be eliminated by breaking their steel-coated hearts. But if one of these creatures bites a human, the result is a destiny worse than death, since the fallen rise again to resurrect among the living dead. The story begins with an armored train traveling at a very high speed at night. The train captain yells at his crew to increase the pressure and speed of the train, because if they stop, they die. He also gives instructions to one of the crew members to announce to people on board that they are an abandoned town and they should brace themselves for impact. On hearing this, trained men on board, known as knights, mount their weapons and prepare for action. As the Iron Fortress train rumbles through a station, chaos erupts as terrifying cabinets, spawned from a mysterious virus, launch an assault. Knights valiantly fend them off, aiming for their steel-coated hearts, the only vulnerable spot, amidst the fray, Ioma, armed with a new weapon faces a dire test. Tragedy strikes when a knight is bitten, forced to take his own life before succumbing to the virus. Meanwhile, a young woman named M awakens on board, seeking news of the Cabani attacks. Evoma, wrestling with the failure of his weapon, is thrust into repairing Lady AMA's father's steam gun. Tensions rise as the Iron Fortress arrives early, bearing the scars of Cabani aggression. Suspicion mounts, leading to confrontations and unjust imprisonments. Mum, guided by Priest Shimon, navigates the tumultuous environment while Ioma grapples with his fears and responsibilities. Amidst chaos, Ioma's ingenuity saves him from infection, offering hope for combating the Cabanus. Mum's resilience shines as she fends off Cabanus, while M, displaying unexpected prowess, clears a path to safety. In this harrowing landscape, alliances are forged and the fight for survival becomes a beacon of hope against encroaching darkness. Ioma and Takumi talk about how they have to mass-produce their new weapon while on their way to join other people at the Iron Fortress. On getting to the Iron Fortress, the guards stop them and ask them to take off their clothes so they could be checked for bite marks. Ioma tries to show them the mark, but Takumi stops him, telling him they won't believe he is not infected. At this moment, two cabanas attack the fortress. Ioma pulled out his weapon, knowing they would allow him into the fortress if he eliminated the cabanas. Before he could attempt, Mum intervenes and eliminates the caban. Ioma could not believe how strong she was. Lady AMA, some knights, and the townspeople all arrive at the Iron Fortress safely. Captain Kusu, the head of the knights, tries to stop Ioma from getting into the Iron Fortress, claiming he is a cabin who has escaped from jail. Mum intervenes and tells them he is not a caban. Everyone boards the Iron Fortress. The crew starts the engines by using a master key that only Lady AM holds. While the journey begins, the train is being attacked by hordes of caban. The knights try to fight them off by shooting at them, but they are too much for them to handle. On the train, Captain Kurusu tries to delegate a job to Mum, seeing how good she is in fighting off Cabanes. She refused and decided to sleep instead. Yoma saves a woman and her children from getting crushed by a pipe on the train. He pulls out his weapon and shoots a Cabane that tried penetrating the train, immediately eliminating it. As he jubilates his triumph, he looks back and sees his friend and other people on the train looking shocked and confused. He looks at himself and realizes he now has a heart similar to that of the Cabanus. Captain Kusu comes to the scene. On seeing this, he pulls out his gun. Before Ivoma can explain, he shoots him. The impact of his shot made Ivoma fall out of the train, and he was left for dead. Someone informs Captain Kusu that there are cabinets in their path. He decides to check it out, but sees that Lord Kano is one of them, and he has been turned. Lady AMA joins him to see what is happening, but she sees her father has been turned and bursts into tears. The train crushes all the cabanes in its path. The train comes to a halt so they can lower the bridge and continue their journey, but the switch is not working. The cabin attack the train, destroying its water tank. Captain Kusu decides to get off the train and lower the bridge manually. Before he could get off the train, one of the crew members informs them that there's someone among the cabinets fighting them. They look out and realize it is Elma and he is not dead. Elma fights off the cabinets with great strength and lowers the bridge for them so they can pass safely. Elma bursts into tears. While he was crying, his friend Takumi threw a rope out and beckoned him to take the rope so he could pull them back on the train. Some people tried to stop Takumi from doing this. Elma ignored it and continued crying. Mum jumps out of the train, ties the rope around his legs, and asks Takumi to pull him back on the train. Captain Kusu and some knights try to pressure him into taking his own life by tossing the suicide bag to him. M intervenes and tells them he is not a cabane. She shows them she also has a heart similar to the cabin like Ioma. She explained they are neither cabanes nor humans, but they are something in between called cabiner. Captain Kurusu refuses to believe the explanation and concludes they are cabanes regardless. Lady Ayame intervenes and makes the people realize they saved them from the cabanas. 
Captain Karusu maintains his stance that he wouldn't allow Cabinus on board the train. Aoma agrees and tries to get off the train, but Mum stops him by throwing him on the floor. Mum asks Lady Ayame if the train is bound for Kukaku, one of the country's greatest strongholds. She promises they will stay in a secluded room on the train if they take them to Kukaku. Aoma tries to interrupt her, but she kicks him in the balls and knocks him out. On the train, they share little wraps of food with everyone, with some people dissatisfied with the quantity. The pregnant lady on the train gets two wraps. Aoma wakes up after having a nightmare. Mum told him his wounds had been healed because of his command ability. Eka asks her why she wants to go to Kukaku. She tells him she has a mission she cannot disclose. Evelma also showed interest in the place because of their research, and because they can give them answers to their cabinet form. Mum explains she falls asleep whenever she fights for too long, so she needs Ayoma to be her shield. She began to train him. People on the train begin to question Lady Ayame's decision to allow Ayoma and Mum, who are cabinets, to be on the train. They demand their immediate removal. Lady AMA assures them they have agreed to stay in a secluded room away from the people and reminds them to show a sense of gratitude because the people they now call cabinets have helped them. The people also demanded they stop the train so they could perform a funeral for everyone they lost before they got too far away. Mum continues to train Aoma, but he keeps not getting it. He asks her why she has a restraint tied to her neck, and she explains once it is removed she will be able to fight to her full potential, but it also makes her get tired quickly. Mum thinks she heard a cabin on board, so she leaves the room and dashes into the other area of the train where people are. She's mistaken and the noise was just from a man trying to get the other wrap of food off the pregnant woman. On seeing her, the people began to panic and scream. Aoma tries to get her back to the room, reminding her that they promised not to leave the room. Captain Kurusu tries to shoot at them because they have broken their promise, but Lady AMA comes in and asks why they've not kept their word. The people demanded that they throw them off the train at once. In the middle of this, a crew member informs them that the water tank they patched was broken, and the train would not be able to make it to the next station. The train stops for repair. Lady AMA was informed the train would not be fully restored until the next morning. She decides they would use the time to offer a prayer to the loved ones they have lost to the cabin during the prayers. Some of the men decide to plot an attack against Ayoma and Mum, claiming they are Keban. Lady AMA notices this. The workers repairing the train also talk about the people they've lost. Back on the train, Mum and Ioma talk about how they lost their families to the Cabanis. Mum asks Ioma why he carries a precious stone in his hand anywhere he goes. He told him the story of how he and his sister found two of them near a river and promised they'd always carry it wherever they go. But unfortunately, the Caban attacked their town and killed everyone, including her sister. He blamed himself for being a coward and couldn't help his sister when she was attacked, but instead he ran away and saved himself. After he went back to where his sister lay, she was already turning into a Caban. He had no choice but to kill her. The men try to attack Eka and Mum, but Lady AMA intercepts them and tells them they are not their enemies. She informs Mum of the attack. Mum faced them and asked if they wanted to fight because she was ready to give it to them. Lady AMA orders them not to fight back. At the prayer ceremony, the pregnant lady begins to have heartbeat rhythms similar to that of Caban. So she thinks she won't be able to have the child. Mum leaves to join them at the prayer ceremony, where she tells them she meant no harm and even plays with a baby. Back at the train, Lady Ayame brings out her knife and pushes it into Ayam's chest, waiting to see his reaction and asking him if the cabiner are their enemy or not. Ayama told her in the presence of the men that his only purpose was to kill the cabinets because that was the promise he made to his sister when she died. She believes him and also the men who doubted them before. Lady Ayame apologizes for testing him in such a way and asks why he didn't grab her arm and push her away. He said he did not want to hurt her. While Lady Ayame was leaving, Ayama collapsed at the ceremony. Mum plays with the kids. She tells them she's hungry and demands blood since she's half Caban. The women became scared, and they called her a monster. On the train, Lady AMA tries to care for Ivoma, but he attacks her, looking like he has become a Caban and has no control of himself. The pregnant woman turned into a cabin immediately. Mum sees this. She dashes toward the woman with swords and eliminates her. Ivoma tries to bite Lady Iam. Everyone blames Mum for killing the pregnant lady. She tells them that the child was also infected, and they are beyond saving. The knight spots some cabinets coming towards the train. Everyone runs back to the train for protection. Back on the train, while Ioma tries to bite Lady AMA, Captain Kushu dashes in and hits him with his gun. Immediately, Ioma comes back to his senses and apologizes to Lady AMA. Mum comes in and informs them they are under attack and they should get the train moving immediately. The workers were asked to hold on with the repairs so they could get the train moving and escape the cabinets. The knight shoots at the cabinets to force them back, but it is to no avail. 
On the train, everyone blames the cabiner for attracting the cabinist to them. Lady Am tells a servant to check her body for bite marks, but she finds nothing. The elders on the train summon Lady Aime and question her leadership. They demand she forfeit her leadership and allow them to rule. She agrees and gives up the master key that controls the train to them. The elders instruct the train drivers to change course and take a faster road to Kukaku. Lady Aime warns that the route is a dangerous one, and they will be vulnerable to Kaban attacks because the path is full of high grounds. They ignore her warning and proceed to take the route. Elman doubts if he is a cabiner or a caban. Mum notices he is hungry, and also tells him she also feels the same way. People on the train send Takumi and two other workers to the room where they kept Ioma and Mum because they are friends with them. They also try to disconnect their carriage away from the train, but before they can finish disconnecting, out of nowhere cabanists attack the train and eliminate them. The train door was already open, and the cabans entered and started eliminating people. Avoma and Mum could not help because they were already locked in. Mum tried to shoot them from their carriage, but it was useless. One of the crew members informs others that they are under attack. One of the elders demands they disconnect their carriage so they can minimize casualties. Captain Kushu and some knights along with Lady Ayame decide they will fight the cabinets instead. Aoma comes up with a plan for them to exit the carriage through a hatch to go and save others, while the knight and Lady Ayame fight the cabanas. Captain Kushu decides to get his sword to fight the cabanas. Mum and Ioma exit their carriage. They wait to leave the tunnel the train is currently passing before they move into other carriages and strike the caban. One of the knights gets bitten and decides to blow himself and some of the cabanas up. Kurusu comes back with his sword and fights the rest of the cabanas. Mum and Ioma prepare to move into the other carriage and Mum warns Ioma that she might reach her limit sooner than expected and he will have to fight on his own. Once they pass the tunnel, they run on the train towards the other carriage, eliminating every cabin on their path. Kushu fights one of the strongest cabin known as a learner on the train. Unfortunately, he is no match for the learner, and he gets injured while fighting the cabinets on the train. Mom reaches her limit and enters into a deep sleep. Elma has no choice but to face the learner on his own. As he proceeds to enter the carriage, he becomes weak and needs blood to gain his energy back. Lady Ayame notices this, cuts herself, and offers to give him her blood. The learner also gets attracted to this blood and tries to attack her. Captain Kushu jumps on the learner and holds him down, giving Ioma time to feed on. Lady Ayame's blood. Ioma, after taking the blood, becomes energized, pounces on the learner, throws him on the floor, and shoots him in his heart with his weapon. Everyone, seeing they've been victorious, starts rejoicing. Everyone, including Mum, cleans the blood stains on the train. Lady Ayame, the knights, the elders, and the crew members hold a meeting in which they decide they will accept Ioma and Mum for who they are and allow them into their midst. An elder asks how they'll feed their cravings for blood. Lady Ayame offers to feed them her blood, but to her surprise, others also volunteer to feed them their blood. Ioma and Mum become free to enter any area of the train as everyone has now accepted them and become their friends. The knights test their new weapons, which are a recreation of the Ioma piercing cannon. Ioma explains the mechanism behind the weapon. Ioma also shows them the sword he created using the metallic layer around the cavity hearts. In another part of the train, two guys fight over food, causing a commotion on the train. Mum tries to warn them, but they hurl insults at her. Mum scolds them and restores the peace and quiet on the train. Ayama, hearing this, comes in and asks Mum if she is the one causing trouble. Lady Ayame comes in and thanks Mum for restoring order on the train. She also calls her the Iron Fortress Guardian. The train comes to a halt because there is no response from the Yoshiro station. It turns out they have been overrun by cabinets. Lady AMA sends out a rescue team to help the survivors. They realize a watchtower has collapsed on the train tracks, preventing them from continuing their journey. One of the knights suggests they turn back and take another route, but Lady AMA disagrees, noting that the journey will take an additional 10 days and their food supply won't last because they had a plan to resupply at the Yashiro station, which has now been taken over by the cabanas. They offer the survivors food and drinks. One of the survivors narrates how a small came from over the wall and engulfed them and recognizes a man among the survivors. This survivor, whose name is Inu, requests to use the toilet, but instead whispers to Mum for them to meet outside. Mum asks him what he needs from her. The survivor narrates how the Shogun was stocking up weapons to eliminate humans and not Caban. He asked Mum to deliver this message to the young master and inform him of the Shogun's suspicious activities. He also asks her to tell the young master he will gladly help in his time of need, but Mum refuses to deliver the latter message. The man pulls out his sword and a gun and threatens to terminate her. He sheathed his sword and warned her they'll cast her away when she is no longer useful, just like him. 
as Idleman explains his plan to remove the watchtower from the train tracks. One of the knights warns him about the danger in the boiler room, which is infested with cabanas. Mum interrupts, disagreeing with their plan to avoid confronting the cabanas directly. Despite Mum's refusal to fight alongside them, she agrees to help with the plan. However, Mum disregards Ioma's warning and attacks the boiler room alone, prompting Ioma to follow her to prevent her from getting hurt. Together, they eliminate the cabinets in the boiler room, allowing Ioma to operate the crane and lift off the watchtower from the tracks. But their actions attract more cabanas, forcing Ioma to instruct Takumi and Sukuri to leave for their safety while he continues the job. Mom, despite becoming weak, fights off the cabinets but is ultimately overpowered and thrown off a cliff. Seeing this, Ioma stops the crane and jumps after her, killing the cabin attacking her. An earthquake rocks the station, causing a giant dark creature known as the Smog to emerge. Mum dreams of her past while trapped under a rock, but Ioma comes to her rescue. They escape the creature and reunite with the others on the train. As they face the Smog, Mum explains the only way to defeat it is by exposing its heart. She volunteers to do this herself, apologizing for her earlier behavior. With teamwork, they manage to pierce the Smog's heart, causing it to explode. However, the train almost derails due to the high speed, but they manage to stabilize it and continue their journey. Despite the challenges, they find moments of joy and camaraderie celebrating the Tanabata ceremony and sharing their wishes. As chaos ensues, the Knights of the Iron Fortress engage in a fierce battle against the cabinets, both from the walls of the station and outside with Lord Biba's forces. Mom and Ioma join the fight, facing a giant caban, which Mum decides to handle herself with assistance from Lord Biba's assistant. Harobi. Inu attempts to assassinate Lord Biba, but fails, leading to his own demise. Aoma confronts Lord Biba for killing Inu, but Takumi intervenes, preventing further escalation. Mom, meanwhile, starts to question Lord Biba's true intentions as she witnesses his actions. The situation escalates as the Liberators and the Iron Fortress are locked in conflict. Harobi, injected with a potion, transforms into a powerful monster, attacking indiscriminately. Mom realizes the extent of Lord Biba's deceit and resolves to help the people, along with Ioma and the others. Amidst the chaos, Mom makes a critical decision to lower the station's defenses, believing she's aiding Lord Biba's forces, only to discover that they're actually cabanas being led into the town. Shocked by her unwitting betrayal, Mom, Ioma, and the others must now face the consequences of their actions. As tensions rise, Mom and Harobi accompany Lord Biba to a meeting with Lord Me, where further betrayals and violence unfold. Mom's realization of the truth about Lord Biba's intentions deepens her resolve to resist him. Amidst the turmoil, plans for rebellion are set in motion with Ioma and his allies seizing control of the train. However, their efforts are met with resistance, leading to a tragic confrontation where lives are lost, including Takumi's sacrifice to protect Ioma. The battle reaches its climax as Mom, under Lord Biba's influence, prepares to carry out his orders, unaware of the extent of his manipulation. Meanwhile, Ioma faces his own struggles as he fights against overwhelming odds to stop Lord Biba in his tyrannical reign. In the midst of despair, hope remains as the survivors regroup and prepare to confront Lord Biba and his forces, determined to bring an end to this tyranny and restore peace to their world. Then he calls her and injects her with the smog potion in Kukaku. The Emperor, also known as the Shogun, addresses the people of the town. He informs them that Iwa Town, which is an important part of their defense, has fallen and the man responsible is the head of the Liberators, Lord Biba. He assures them they have nothing to worry about because Kukaku is an impregnable fortress. A man walks up to him and requests he inform them about the smog that destroyed As Gate. The Emperor pushes his sword into him and eliminates him so the information doesn't get to the people. Ioma dreams of Mum attacking him. He wakes up abruptly and blames himself for the death of Takumi, saying he shouldn't have allowed him to fight alongside him. He also blames himself for Mum, claiming this would never have happened if they hadn't met. He sees a cabani coming toward him, and he runs and hides in an abandoned ship. The Iron Fortress arrives in Kukaku. Words reach the Emperor that Lady AMA has captured Lord Biba and wants to hand him over. The Iron Fortress was allowed into the city, Lord Biba in cuffs. Whispers to Lady AMA to follow the script and play along or they harm her people. Lady AMA meets her uncle and tells him what happened to her father. She requests they take her people in because they are exhausted from the long journey, but she is informed that the city's inspection policy requires them to be isolated for three days regardless if they have been bitten or not. When he hears someone come in, thinking it is the Kabani, Ioma in his hideout trips and falls, but is Kurusu. Kurusu asks him what has happened to Lady Aim and everyone else. He informs him they've been arrested by Lord Biba. Kyusu gets angry and scolds him for running away and not helping them. A scientist checks his wound. 
Hu Chu asks him to join them in going after the Iron Fortress, but he refuses and says he is better off dead. Lord Biba kneels in the presence of the Emperor. He returns the knife his father gave him when he was young. He asks his father, the Emperor, to be the one to take his life. The Emperor agrees and unsheathes the knife to strike him, but unknown Lord Biba already laced the knife with a potion that turns people into cavernous. Lord Biba tells everyone present that the Cabane live among people, and that the reason he has survived Cabanus is because he can tell them apart from humans. He tells them even at the moment there is a Cabane among them. The Emperor begins to transform. The guards on seeing this shoot him multiple times. Lord Biba rises, unsheathes his sword, and tells him fear killed him and not him before pushing his sword into him. Lord Biba tells the people of the city that their Emperor is a Cabane and there are Cabanus among them. A commotion erupts in the town as the people begin to fight and terminate one another. The Liberators infiltrate the city and open the gate to allow Lord Bebas to train the Triumphant Fortress to enter the city. The Triumphant Fortress releases cabanas all over the city. The Cabanes begin to annihilate the people of the city. One of the guards figured out Lord Bina turned the Emperor into a Kabani with a knife before he could attack. Lord Biba terminated him. Kurusu prepares to journey down to Kukaku to save Lady Aim and the people of the Iron Fortress. The scientist says that Mum must have been turned to a smog by now and that Ioma has given up on life and is no different from the Cabanis. Kyusu gets him and asks him to keep his mouth shut. He walks up to Ioma and tells him that Mum deliberately soared him because the stab wound was just a fraction away from his heart. He also tells him they turned Mum into a smog. After Ioma hears this, he decides to follow them down to Kukaku. Mum begins to have memories of the past as she gradually transforms into a smog. Avalma cuts his hair and fixes his weapon on his amputated right hand. The scientist tells him Mum will lose her life when she becomes the smog and the only way to save her is to inject her heart with white plasma. He asks the scientist to give him a potion that will give him extraordinary powers. He injects himself with the potion and begins to transform. The scientist tells him he needs to remove his restraint to unleash his full power. As he pulls on the restraint, he recalls his last moments with his sister and Mum. He removes the restraint and fully transforms. Mum transforms into a mighty smog and terrorizes the city, destroying everything in her path. The knights of the city shoot at the cabinets, but they can't seem to overpower them until Ika and Kurusu arrive in Kukaku and join in the fight. Aikim shoots the cabinets with his might and Kyusu slices through them with his sword. After exterminating the cabinets, they proceed to save Mum with the antidote. Elwin recalls that the scientist warned that there was only one antidote left so he had to choose between saving himself or saving Mum, but his heart was made up and nothing will stop him from saving Mum. People of the Iron Fortress imprisoned Miss Yukina and her peers, protesting they should set them on fire because they brought the virus into the town. Lady Ayame interferes and demands they handle things peacefully and not eliminate the wrong people but they should eliminate their doubting minds. She assures them they will escape Kukaku. Mum continues to destroy the city. The knight shoots cannons and throws everything at her, but nothing proves to be effective. In her unconsciousness, she sees visions of butterflies chasing her and her mother screaming at her. One of the commanders of Lord Biba, whose name is Lord Sahari, reports to Lord Biba that Mum will soon reach the tower and they need to evacuate. Before they could start evacuating, Ioma and Kurusu attacked them. The two lords were shocked to see Ioma because they thought he was dead. They tried to shoot him in the head because that was a weak spot, but Kusu interfered and sliced them up with his sword. Lord Sahari, seeing that nothing worked, decides to crush him with a train. He was held down on the tracks while the train rushed at him with great speed. Before the train could crush him, a great surge of energy leaves his body and sends the train into the air and blows it up. Lord Sahari with rage attacks him with a spear but a coma can hold him off and he shoots him in the chest. Lord Baya wonders why Alma won't break after so many wounds he has inflicted. One of the scientists informs him that the Cabanes are spreading more than they have anticipated. He offers him the white blood antidote in case it comes to the worst. Lord Biba delegates one of his soldiers to plan their escape once it is over because he has somewhere to go. As he says, a dying man is calling him. Mum continues on her rampage. Kurusu and Ioma try to catch up with her and almost lose their lives in the process. Kurusu faces a horde of cabinets, but he tells Ioma to go save Mum that he can handle himself. Ioma runs to save Mum. Mum continues in her vision, but she gets overwhelmed by the power of the smog and she collapses in the real world. Before Ivoma can give her the antidote, Lord Biba stops him and they engage in a fierce battle. Lord Biba seems to be getting the best of Ioma as he pushes his sword into Ioma, but Ioma breaks it. He also tries to rip off Ioma's hand, but he eventually throws him off with his powers. Ioma charges at him with rage but stops abruptly, looking confused. Lord Biba tries to sneak up on him from behind, but Ioma sees it coming and shoots his hand away from his body. 
Elma dashes towards Mum and injects her with the antidote immediately. The rest of the smog begins to melt away and Mum comes out unharmed. She wakes up and sees Lord Biba shooting at the helpless body of Ika. Mum begs him to stop but he won't listen so she takes his spear and pierces him through the heart. Back in the city, everyone tries to board the Iron Fortress. Lady Im and the rest try to uncover Lord Bima's escape route. One of Lord Bib's soldiers offers to show them the route if only they will give him a lift on the train. Kajika slaps him but Lady AMA tells them to remain calm and accept their deal as they mean no harm. Elma lies lifeless on the floor with Mum and Karusu by his side. Kajika speaks to them through the public address speakers and tells them to meet them at the Iron Fortress. They start the train and they begin their journey. Kurusu carries Aima, and they leave to catch up with the train. They catch up with the rest. The train speeds out as the city collapses behind them. A little girl whose name is Miyuku watches as the snow falls. Her father beckons on her to come inside the house so she can get warm. She refuses and says she would like to continue watching. Her father walks over to her and wears her a jacket so she doesn't freeze. He tells her that it is probably the last time they will see a snowfall that year. Some knights point their guns at a man. The man asks if he is a human or a kabani. Mom narrates that the Keban are walking corpses and the country of Hinamoto is under threat from them. She narrates that half a year after the fall of Kukaku and the death of the Shogun, Hinamoto split into different regions and each had to fight the Kabani on their own. She says that the Iron Fortress continued its journey and went to Yunato, a town in the Hokiku region, so they could cross the He Mountains. But the problem was that Nat had been overrun by Kabanis five years earlier and it was now a battlefield because the allied forces of Hokuriku were trying to recapture the town. The knights shoot at the cabinets as they try to attack them. One of the Kabani breaks into a gun-making factory and attacks the workers. Mum comes in and shoots the Kabani, thus eliminating it. More cabinets attack, but she easily eliminates them all. The Iron Fortress drives into the town and Lady AMA instructs her knights to offer the allied forces support. Kusu joins the fight and cuts through the cabinets like milk. Mum times herself and moves on to join the forces at the front line, eliminating all the cabinets in her way. She gets to the front line and notices that she passed her stipulated time. The knights there ask why she isn't at the rear fighting the cabane there, but she tells them they've handled it already. She eliminates all the cabinets with ease. The knights were surprised to see how good she was and wondered if she was a cabane. She confirms to them that she is and even explains who a cabane is. More cabinets attack and overpower one of the knights. At this moment, another one of the Kibben pulls Mum's feet and almost tosses her over, but she holds onto a rail. Elma rushes to the scene, eliminates the Kibani, and saves Mum. He asks if she is okay and urges that they finish off the rest of the Kibbenis. Elma pulls out the knight from under the pile of Kibbenis and throws bombs at them. Mum shoots at the bombs, causing them to explode and blast the Kibbenis into pieces. When the fight is over, Elma asks if Mum is feeling okay and she replies that she is and walks away but he notices that she is lying. Two of the Yunato knights taunt Ikoma that he is not as strong and cute as the other one, Mum. They tell them not to get too full of himself just because he eradicated some of his friends at the cabin is because there is still a lot for him to handle. They warn him not to do anything funny, or they throw him in prison. In the town, people put a protective barrier over the blocks they have recaptured. One of the knights reports the length of their victory to the commander, who says that they have to capture the Yado castle and burn everything to the ground. Miss Yukina and Sakura check the Iron Fortress for damages. Yukina suggests that they disassemble the train for repairs because they overworked it. They walk up to Ayoma and ask what is wrong with him. He informs them that there is something wrong with the cabinets of Yunato and they seem to be mind-controlled. He shows them the footprints of the cabinets and tells them they also work together to prove his point. He brings out his diary and writes something down. Sakura notices he has a headache and asks and Ayoma says he has always been feeling that way since they arrived. The knights arrive back at the Allied Force headquarters in Yunado. Lady Ayame welcomes back Kusu and says she is glad he is safe. One of the knights says they will be going back to Aragon Station to get rice seeds. Kajika and her kids welcome Mum and ask if she's okay. Suzuki asks her about the weapon he made for her. She tells him that she experienced some issues, but he claims she doesn't know how to use it. Mum repairs the pearl Elma gave her so she can give it back. Kajika asks what Ayoma told her when he gave her the pearl. She replies that he said the spirit of his sister and Takumi will always protect her, and that he will turn her into a human someday. Kajika teases her that Ayoma is trying to marry her, but she flares up and denies it. Sakura shows Elma that he has noticed Kayan's footsteps at the blocks in the rear. Elma rushes out to inform Lady Ayame about these findings, but he runs into Mum who asks to see him. He notices that Lady Ayame is passing by, so he tells Mum to let it wait. 
Kajika tells her they will give it to him later, but she refuses and says she is no longer interested. The Iron Fortress crew and the Allied forces hold a meeting to discuss their next line of action in taking back the town. They were informed that Narukami, which is a self-propelled mortar, would arrive in four days to aid their plans to take back the town and clear the path. Each of the forces was informed of their positions and strategy in executing the plan. One of the United people tried to make excuses, but he was reprimanded. Elma asks what they will do if the cabinets attack from the territories they have taken as he spreads out a map. Ikoma tells the members of the meeting that there have been sightings of cabin footprints at the rear of the city, and it seems someone has been summoning them. He urges them to let him investigate the situation, but Sir Kogi, one of the leaders, says it is not possible and accuses Ayoma of summoning. Ayoma loses his temper and yells at him that someone is controlling the cabinets and he is allowed to investigate. One of the knights attacks him and says he is the one who is here to kill them. Ayoma fell on his knees. Sakura notices he has a headache and urges him to go rest. He refuses and tells him they have to get out of the town as soon as possible. Kuroi says he is not fit to participate in the meeting. Lady Ami apologizes and says that they will talk some sense into him. Mom walks in on Ioma and sees him packing. She asks where he is heading to and he replies that he has to investigate who is summoning the cabin alone since no one believes him. Mom pleads with him not to go because he can't handle the cabin alone and he will just get himself killed in the process. Ayoma accuses her of not believing him and also siding with the allied forces just like Lady Ayame did. He adds that she did the same thing when Karikatasu came. She tells him the reason she did that. Ayoma says that he has to investigate the situation to prevent the big threat from happening. At that moment, he freezes and changes into a Kabani. He attacks Mum and pushes her outside. The knights see this and try to shoot him. Mum pulls him out of the way and back inside the house where she struggles to get Ayoma off her. Ayoma comes back to his senses when he sees her crying. Mum says amidst tears that he is planning to break his promise by going off to die alone. The soldiers dash in and arrest Ayoma. Lady Ayame and Kyusu try to interfere, but a soldier threatens to shoot them. Ayoma pleads with them to put him in confinement, and if he doesn't show symptoms in three days, he should be released according to the rule. Kuroji agrees to this and instructs the soldiers to eliminate him if they feel unsafe around him. They take him away as he yells out to Mum to wait for him. Kuchu trains Lady AMA how to use the sword. She wasn't getting it and Kurusu asked if her reaction was prompted by what happened to Edoma. She agrees and blames herself for not treating the situation differently. Kurusu says that Ayoma always could spot the enemy and he believes there is someone out there controlling the cabinets. He adds that it is a mutual enemy and they must all join in the fight. Lady Am agrees with him. Lady Am and the rest of the Iron Fortress plan their next line of action. Sakura reveals that there is an underground passageway underneath the castle, which was built by the former lord of the town to allow the villagers to escape in case of a Kabani attack. He adds that it is here the footprints have been spotted. One of the knights volunteered to lead the investigation. Lady Am motivates them and encourages them to work together so they can get back home. Mum comes in and volunteers to also come. They get to the passageway and find it blocked. They discover a secret passageway near the original one and meet a metal membrane from the cabinets on it. The Narukami arrive at the town earlier than expected. There is anxiety in the town as everyone clamors to get prepared for the Narukami campaign. Lady Ayame walks up to Kuroji to ask why the Narukami arrived earlier than expected. He ignores her question and tells her to proceed with the plan. At the passageway, Kuroi's soldiers confront Mum and the others about why they were at the location. Before they could get an answer, Cabanas tore through the door and attacked them. Mum leaves the spot and goes after the one summoning them. Ayoma hears the alarm go off to signal that Cabanas have attacked the town and at the same time, the Narukami campaign has started. Mum moves swiftly to get to her target. She encounters some cabinets on the way and also sets off a trap, but she escapes without a problem and continues on her journey. The Iron Fortress gets to its position and its crew starts repairing the tracks. The Allied forces prepare to launch the Narukami at the castle. Ioma screams at the soldiers to release him so he can help. They tell them to shut his mouth and point their guns at him. They inform him that Mum has entered the tunnel and they accuse him of summoning the cabinets. They shoot at him as he tries to break free from the chains, but he gets free when they are distracted by a sound. Kuroji walks up to him and shoots him in the chest. Kuroji instructs the soldiers to eliminate him, but they hesitate and Ioma makes his escape. Kuroji tries to chase him, but he loses him and returns to the main mission. Mum gets to the end of the passageway and encounters a company, but she takes care of it. Kuroji instructs his men to fire at will when the castle doors open. As the door opens, the cabinets swarm out and the allied forces shoot at them. The Narukami arrive and they fire at the castle. 
The cabanas at the rear of the city break through the barrier and attack the people inside. The soldiers attack the cabani, but they are overwhelmed. Kuroji tells them to get the Narukami back and retreat. The Narukami are returned, and they retreat. Mum finally gets to her destination and finds her father controlling the cabinets. She asks him why he is doing this, and he replies that he is doing it for her. He explains that he lost everything and became a cabani, and the only thing that kept him human was the thought of her. He says he has to protect her and make her human again. She says she is human and the people around her are human, and that she doesn't want to become human by killing others. He says it is the only way to bring her back. She begs him to stop, but he refuses. He attacks her, but she dodges his attack. She tries to kill him, but she hesitates. He attacks her again, and she falls off the cliff. He rushes to her aid, but she stops him from touching her. She says he did what he did because he loves her, but he hurt a lot of people and she won't forgive him for that. She adds that she doesn't care if she is a Kabani or a human, and that she won't kill others to stay human. She apologizes and tells him she loves him, but she has to stop him. She cuts him off and he falls off the cliff. Mung falls to her knees and cries. The allied forces retreat. One of the knights says they can't continue because they lost the Narukami and the castle wasn't destroyed. Another one says the Kabani took over the rear of the city. Kuroji says he knows and he tells them to go back to the Iron Fortress. Aoma gets to the scene and sees Mum crying. He rushes to her and asks what happened. She tells him everything and he consoles her. They gather and head back to the Iron Fortress. Kuroji gets back to the Iron Fortress and reports to Lady Ayam. He tells her that they lost the Narukami and the castle wasn't destroyed. Lady Ayame tells him not to blame himself because it wasn't his fault. They hear someone calling and go to check it out. They find Ioma and Mum standing there. Mum tells them what happened and Ioma adds that they have to leave the town immediately. Lady Ayame tells the people to prepare for immediate evacuation. A soldier reports that the Kambani are on their way to the town. The people panic and run to get on the train. Ioma and Mum prepare to go and find Sakura and Yukina, but a soldier tells them they have to leave immediately. They refuse and say they will go after them and they run off. Lady Ayame tells the soldiers to let them go and they board the train. The Iron Fortress leaves the town as the Kabani closes in. Mum and Ioma find Sakura and Yukina, and they get on the train. The Iron Fortress speeds out of the town as the Kabani take over. Lady Ayame watches as the town is destroyed and cries. Mum wakes up from her dream and Ioma tells her everything will be fine. Lady Ayame looks out the window and sees the snow falling. She tells herself that everything will be fine. She closes the curtain and continues on her journey. Later, a strange man with his rifle aims at the forces as they prepare to launch. Another mum gets carried away and thinks Ioma is with her. She trips and falls down the tunnel, missing Ikoma, and wonders why she decided to face the challenges alone and without Ioma. She notices a strange-looking cabin sneaking up on her. Eka tries to join the others, but one of the soldiers sees him, assumes he is a cabane, and shoots him in the leg. The allied forces prepared to shoot the castle the second time, but before they could launch the mortar, the strange man shot at them and eliminated the detonator. A horde of cabins swarm over the train and block the weapon opening. They try to fire another shot, but the weapon self-destructs. Mum engages in a fight with the cabin, but he proves too fast for her and gets the better of her. Someone informs Lady AMA that the allied forces train has been overrun by cabinets. On the train, Kuroi puts the train into motion in a bid to escape the cabanas but he gets bitten in the leg and is overpowered by them. The train leaves its track, crashes into the mountains, and explodes. Ioma struggles to walk with the bullet wound. He remembers that he made a promise to Mum to turn her human. This motivates him, and he uses the pointed end of his weapon to take out the bullet. Mum struggles to fight the cabane, and she has to hide under a rock to save herself. Cabin pushes the rock with the hope of crushing her with it. She calls on Ioma for help. At that moment, Ioma jumps in from the roof and shoots till it loses its life. He rests on Mum, looking weak. He tells her that he has not forgotten his promise to her and pleads with her not to ever leave his side. They embrace each other and Ioma's heart glows. The Iron Fortress crew finish preparing the tracks. Someone reports to Lady Ayame that Ioma has escaped his cell in Sukuri, and the others have entered the tunnel. But there have not been any sightings of Ioma. Kyutsu informs her that Ioma is headed for the Unato castle to take on the Kabani controller. He advises her that they should advance and move quickly to the castle. Lady Ayame spots one of the leaders of the Allied forces and asks him what he is doing. He replies that he has ordered his squad to retreat. Lady Ayame lashes at him, saying that a person who is afraid to protect his people is no different from a Kabani. Eka wonders why his heart glowed. He told Mum that the same happened when he saved her at Kokaku. Shikari finds his way in and interrupts them. He gives Ioma back his weapon. The Iron Fortress departs for Yada Castle. The leader of the Allied forces fights the cabinets to make way for their departure. 
Edelma and the rest ride out to the castle. The Iron Fortress blows up the entry of the tunnel to make way for their journey to the castle. Edelma and his friends got to the castle and noticed there was a cocoon with a child in it. The strange man shoots Shojin in the leg. He tries to shoot Ioma but misses. One of them says the man's name is Sir Kageyuki, the former lord of the town. The man tells them the story of how he became a cabinary. He says that the man was dead but came back alive as a cabiner to protect his people. But he was mistaken for a cabane and was shot alongside his daughter Miyuki by his people. To bring her back to life, he bit her and turned her into a caban. Mom notices it is Miyuki who is in the cocoon. She informs them that Miyuki is the heart of a smob, also known as the cabaret, and she's gathering cabinets to turn the castle into a giant smob. Soon, Ioma tells her not to be scared because they will stop the smog together, and it won't be like last time when she was turned into a smog at Kokaku. Mom suggests they stop the cabane leader, Sir Kageyuki, so that Yunaga will not be destroyed. Unmo yells out at the leader to stop what he is doing so Yunato doesn't get destroyed. He shoots at him, but Ioma jumps in and takes the bullet. Mom shoots back at the leader, causing him to drop his weapon. She charges at him, and they engage in combat. She seems to be getting the better of the leader until she sees an illusion and she gets distracted. Unmo pleads with Sege Yuki not to get his heart covered in hatred. He blames Unmo for not standing up for him the day his daughter was executed, and he pushes his sword into him and executes him. Ioma charges at him, but he throws him on the floor. Mom tells Ioma to let him handle him, and they engage in a fierce fight. Mom overpowers and executes him, and she collapses on the floor looking weak. Miyuki cries out in pain after seeing this. She bursts the cocoon and wakes up the smog. As Ioma and the rest run out of the castle to save their lives, the smog begins to destroy the town. The Iron Fortress could not go further because the tracks were blocked. Ioma and the others in the castle rush to get into the Iron Fortress while Kyusu eliminates the cabin as trying to stop them. They safely get onto the Iron Fortress and they retreat while the smog chases after them. Miss Yukina says she has to crash the train into the tunnel to get the smog off them, but she will have to decelerate before the switchback. She asks Sukari to measure the distance and time before she decelerates and instructs him to give the signal. Lady Ayame orders everyone on the train to hold on to the handrails because the braking system will be activated. The train rams into the tunnel and the brakes are activated, causing the smog to crash into the rocks and lose its grip on the train. Mom has flashbacks of her mother when she was little telling her not to be scared. It began to snow and everyone was surprised to see this. Sir Kyuki, in his last breath, reaches out to touch the snow and says it is the last snow of the year. The Iron Fortress leaves the town as the people on board wave goodbyes to the UN people. Miss Yukina tells Sukari she is glad to see him safe. Sukari seems happy to hear this, but she switches up and says she is only happy to see him because he needs his assistance to disassemble the train for repairs. Kurmushu warns Lady AMA not to ever face the enemy again because she has learned a little bit of swordsmanship. He also adds that she should not speak out at councils and also avoid doing chores. She smiles and says okay. Aoma tells Mom that the cabinets are people who are afraid of other people and hate them. He adds that their hatred is what makes normal people anxious as Takumi once told him. Takumi once asked him if the cabinets feel angry when their friends get executed, but he disagrees. He says that when he looks at their scary eyes, it feels like they hate him. Aoma laughs and calls him a scaredy cat. Aoma tells Mom that he doesn't understand what he meant then, but now he does. He continues by saying that the Kevin virus causes anger and anxiety, but if there's someone a person cares about that will overpower those feelings just like the time his heart glowed in the tunnel. He tells Mum that he has not forgotten his promise to her. Mum asks him if he likes the pearl she gifted him. He says he does at this point.